Hey everyone, how's it going? Elliot here again. My mate Alex recently came back from Japan and whilst he was out there, he picked up a couple of things for me. This one here on the left is a Hello Kitty Game Boy Pocket, which he got for 1,500 yen. And this right here is a Nintendo DS, it's the fatter version, uh, which he picked up for 100 yen which is literally like 80 pence. I'll put the exact um, currency conversion as of today up on the screen right now. 80 pence. I mean, what could possibly be wrong with this? I remember him saying basically in this translation that it's something to do with the touch screen. Uh, so let's just figure it out together. I'm very, very excited, obviously, um, to think that these things were, you know, well over a hundred pounds when they first came out. And now it's being sold for 80 pence. Uh, the general condition of it is pretty worn, obviously. What would you expect for uh, 80 pence? But I've definitely seen worse. And funnily enough, the hinge is actually still intact, which is obviously um, a pretty good uh, you know, start. Uh, I've got another one here, which we may have to use for spares, and the hinge is gone, which is the typical um, sort of thing that happens to these DSs. My actual personal one when I was younger is now uh, suffering the same fate. Let's press the power button and see what happens. Okay, so obviously this is going to be in Japanese. It has got the touch screen, uh, the stylus, sorry. And okay, so the touch screen works perfectly. Why was this sold for 80 pence? I find myself asking. Where's the volume? Okay, we've got volume. The touch screen works, the buttons work. Uh, maybe if we go into the actual, oh, Okay, I can see a slight, the, the bottom screen's sort of flickering. I'm not sure if it's gonna pick up on camera. So I'm basically just going through and trying to calibrate this thing. One thing I can immediately notice is there's actually a screen protector on the bottom uh, screen and they can, they can sometimes cause problems, especially because right here is a bit of dust under the screen protector and that it may register as a uh, screen press you know so uh yeah okay the calibration seems to work um fine i don't believe it's possible to change the language on this thing i think it's actually um integrated into the motherboard so if we go over to settings uh we've got the region here english language set to english there's no way this is absolutely what the heck It literally works. It's, it literally works perfectly. Um, I haven't got an actual DS game, but I do have the Nintendo DS browser here. It's registered that there's a game in there. It's going to require the memory pack. That means that the cartridge works fine. So it was definitely something to do with the touchscreen. And um, yeah, unfortunately, well, fortunately, I should say, I can't seem to find any problems with this touchscreen at all. So it's gonna be very, very hard for you to see, but there should be a thin line which sort of runs down the side there. I thought that was um, a screen protector, but it's actually just where the dirt um, has accumulated from where a screen protector was. And the screen protector has actually now been removed. You can see I broke the line there. So um, I've got myself a perfectly working Nintendo DS for 80 pence. What? I feel like this video is sort of a little bit rubbish. So what I shall do then is just swap over the bottom screen from the pink one into the black one, uh, and that should just remove the uh, flickering issue and the slight calibration issue. Uh, really, really funny to think that that's the only problem on this thing and they're selling it for 80 pence. So once you've removed the battery, there's a few tri-wing screws, which are just all the way around the outside of the DS. Um, I'm saying this like you guys are gonna have the same issue as me. You may do if you go over to Japan and pick up one of these and it has a screen fault. Uh, you can buy replacement screens on eBay. I'll actually leave a link to that in the description if you want to check it out uh, for very, very cheap. Okay, and there we go. And here is the ribbon cable for the screen. So there's actually going to be a little bit more uh, disassembling that we're going to have to do. We're going to have to grab a Phillips screwdriver again now. And there's a few Phillips screws, which we're going to take off. Uh, we're going to have to undo the ribbon cables, which you can actually just do with your fingernail. These ones are nice and big and also very strong. If you can get yourself a pair of plastic tweezers as well, uh, that's just a little bit better against the uh, the ribbon cables than using a metal one. Uh, so go ahead and just take out those ribbon cables. There's a couple more down here as well. 
These are quite easy to undo. Just put your tweezers either side on the little black locks and wiggle them around. And then you can just unhook the ribbon cables. There we go. And there is the motherboard out. One thing you are gonna have to do is just peel back the foam that's on the top of the, uh, the screen, uh, which basically just stops any shorts um, from the back of the metal screen on the motherboard. Um, and then that just has the ribbon cable for the top screen uh, rooted underneath it. So just peel that off and back, and then it will just slide out. And there we go, there is the bottom screen removed. So I'm gonna do the same to the pink one, get that screen out, drop it in, and we'll be good to go. Okay, there's the old back out. Here is the screen from the pink Nintendo DS going in now. We'll just set the uh, the ribbon cable down. Okay, so if we now just drop this motherboard back into place, make sure that those uh, ribbon cables um, on the right-hand side are actually coming through this hole here. Uh, you might need to just guide them through with some tweezers or something like that. Set them through. And uh, yeah, it's all a very simple job to be honest with you and then you just have to put everything back into place again. Make sure the antenna is uh, popped back in. Ta-da! Okay, whack the uh, the back piece on. No, no, screws have got to go in first. What a rookie error. So uh, I would love to go to Japan. One of the reasons is uh, there is some beautiful scenery, some lovely food, um, exquisite cultural differences to, uh, to where I am in the UK. Um, but one of the main factors and when I say one of the main factors, that is a large understatement. The abundance of <laughs> retro gaming um, over there is, uh, yeah, pretty attractive to someone like me who is very much into their uh, retro gaming. Uh, however, the one thing that isn't very attractive is the price of getting over there. It's honestly about, I mean, you'd be looking at about a £1,000 for just under a week. And obviously for that, it wouldn't really be worth going. Um, I, I have been told that you can get flights for around £300 at their cheapest. Uh, what is the likelihood of you actually arriving in Japan for £300 is the question I find myself asking. Uh, but one day I would very much like to go. I think it'd probably be the sort of thing you'd have to set aside a few thousand pounds for. But it, it really is going to be, you know, one of a once in a lifetime opportunity. In fact, my friend Gattis, who is in this studio right now, he's been to Japan. What did you think of Japan, Gattis? Brilliant. Thank you for your input, Gattis. Okay, moment of truth, turning it on. Will it work? Will it not? There is nothing displayed. Oh, that's actually because we've taken the battery out. And yes, okay, we're right there, back to the start. We're on the, um, you know, the introduction where you have to go through and set your name up and everything like that. So let's see if the calibration is any good. So we'll press Shift, E, L, L, uh, ooh. Ah, okay. Okay, so it doesn't actually look like the, uh, the calibration is correct at the moment. So let's just go through the touchscreen calibration and hopefully it will be uh, all good after that. There we go, test the calibration marks. Wow, absolutely spot on. That is an 80 pence Nintendo DS right there, fellas. Big thank you to the lady who sent the, the pink one into my PO box. Super, super happy with it. You'll definitely see it again in a future video. Um, I'm gonna be getting the memory expansion pack for the Nintendo DS browser, and then we can check out um, stuff on the internet on a DS from like 2004, I think, or something like that. Uh, if you have enjoyed this video and you're new to the channel, please leave a like and subscribe uh, for more content in the future. Thank you very much for watching and I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.